Today, I'm going to show you how to go from this to this on this. Let's do it. Welcome to Biz Eagle Mail, photography reviews and how to's. Now, in an effort to get the most out of my iPad, I've been editing some photos from a recent photo shoot on it, and I've been really surprised that the results I'm getting on the iPad look very similar to the results that I usually get from Photoshop and Lightroom on my Mac. The apps that I've been using on the iPad are Affinity Photo and Darkroom. And today I'm gonna to share my workflow with you right from the raw file all the way to the point where I'm ready to export and share it. So without further ado, let's jump into Affinity Photo on the iPad. So let's open up Affinity Photo. And the iPad I'm using is a sixth generation entry level iPad. It has a 2.3 gigahertz quad core processor. Although it does only use two of those cores at any one time and Affinity Photo is a bit of a beast. So it's probably going to be, well, it's definitely going to be using the, it's two high performance cores. So this is a Nikon RAW file from a D610 and I've chosen this photo. It is from a shoot I did in my studio in Romania in December 2018 and it should give us a decent demonstration and quite a significant before and after. So in Affinity Photo, it launches us straight into the develop module. So I'm gonna come over here and I don't really wanna do much. I'm quite happy with my exposure. However, I will just increase it ever so slightly. Very, very slightly. 21, why not? If you do find yourself having to bring your exposure all the way up and all the way down, then you may want to reconsider your settings and your lighting. I just so happen to have a video all about that on my channel. So after I've done that, what I want to do is I want to make sure I'm in the photos persona or photo persona, long press on the screen and then duplicate the layer. And I'm going to come into my layers over here, see that I have two layers, which is good. And then I'm gonna go down to, in the filters panel, frequency separation. Now frequency separation, low frequency over here, you have the colors and high frequency, you have the textures and frequency separation is going to separate them, which is highly useful. So now we can edit just the colors and just the textures on two separate layers. And I found a good radius for this is 8.5. Now I've tried the default of two, and I've tried much higher radiuses, radii, radiuses of like 30 and 40, and they just don't work for what I want to do. So I'm gonna apply a radius of 8.5. Okay, so once that is done, we can see here that our frequencies have been separated. We have high frequency, which is texture, and then low frequency, which is the colors. Then what I wanna do, with low frequency selected, I'm gonna select the freehand selection tool and I'm gonna make sure it's checked to new. And then I'm gonna select a feather of around 14 and a half pixels. This is a 24 to like 22, 24 megapixel image. And I found that a radius, uh, a feather, sorry, of 14 and a half pixels works the best for me. If you don't feather it enough, then you will get harsh edges around the areas that you're gonna soften in a minute, which we don't want, we want nice feathered edges. So I'm avoiding all the areas of detail. So like the eyes, they don't need a softening or smoothening. The smoothening, I think that's a word. Uh, the teeth, the lips, I'm avoiding all areas like that. And I'm not being so precise, you know, you don't have to pixel peep when you make your selection. And just again, just double checking the low frequency layer is selected. And then I'm gonna go back down to my filters and choose Gaussian blur, which because these are alphabetical, it's conveniently right there for us. And you can see by blurring the colors on the low frequency layer, look what's happened. If we apply that Gaussian blur and then deselect it, you can see here, if I just group these layers together to give you a better idea, already in just a few seconds, what we can achieve. 
So it's already looking really, really nice. So then I'm gonna come into my high frequency layer and I'm gonna tackle some of the textures. So the low frequency with the Gaussian blur has blurred the colors together. And what people don't realize is that a lot of like skin, it doesn't look its best because of colors and not because of textures. So by blurring the colors, you can see the result that that's had. So what I wanna do now in the high frequency layer is come to the clone stamp tool or clone brush tool, hardness of zero, flow and opacity of 100, and then make sure that the width or the size of the clone stamp is roughly the same as the area that you're gonna edit. So now I wanna tackle this area here first. So with one finger, I'm gonna make my source. And then with the Apple Pencil, I'm just gonna, yep, I did do that affinity. <laughs> there we go. Paint over the area that I wanna fix. So now it's just editing the textures. Although in the high frequency layer, there are some colors that do remain. So you will edit a bit of the color as well, but not much. So let's now take it to another level and break out the patch tool. So I'm quite happy with that so far. Again, I don't want to, again, it, like, if I zoom in this far, you can see every little pore, every little detail on the face and you just become obsessed. So it's not very good. So I'm just going to stay zoomed out. Now what I want to do is I want to go back to my layers panel, tap low frequency and I'm going to make sure that I have this view tool selected. I'm going to duplicate the layer again. So I'm going to rename it just so I don't get confused. I'm going to rename it number two. So I've just duplicated my low frequency layer. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here and go to the patch tool. So again, I'm just going to affect the colors and just take a look at the, I would call, they're not bags, the darker areas under the eyes here. Now these are perfectly natural. People have these. They give dimension to the eyes and the face. They are not a big deal. And I, it's not my intention whatsoever to get rid of them completely. But I'm just gonna lighten them a little bit. So I'm gonna draw around that area and I'm gonna drag to a new area. It's a bit lighter than the one I've selected and just let go. So if it doesn't look like I've done anything, there's a before and there's the after. So there is still a shadow there. There's still an area, a little bit area of darkness where the line is, which is what I want. I don't want to make someone's face perfectly flat. And the same again with this one. And again, if it doesn't look like anything is happening, then you're doing something right most of the time. Sometimes uh, <laughs> you're actually not doing anything. It happens to all of us. <laughs> so let's continue. So it's not just for bags under the eyes. The patch tool is good for evening out skin tone. Again, I'm not trying to fill in shadows. Like these shadows like around here, for example, and you know, on the cheeks, underneath the chin and things like that. They help to give the face a shape and dimension. Uh, and so I, I wanna keep those. I don't wanna fill in every single little shadow. So I can just use the patch tool to just fill in little areas where the skin tone is darker than what I would like. And let's see how this looks. Now you can sometimes get a bit of an edge with this. Again, just make sure that uh, your new frequency, your new low frequency layer is selected. And then just drag and you can see the color changing there. Don't want it that bright, there we go. So I think that's done a pretty good job. If we zoom out, if we go before and after, 
it's just evened out the skin tones in that area which is what we want and you can do that any area that you feel necessary so let's take this area here make it a little bit brighter again subtlety is the key here you don't want to look at it and go and it'd be really obvious straight off the bat <laughs> So another method of evening out the skin tones is to use the brush tool. So what you can do, either on another new low frequency layer or the same layer, I just use the same layer personally, you can come to the brush tool and with a flow of around three or five or something very low like that, opacity of 100 and again a width of roughly the area that you're going to be brushing, you can brush in new colors so with the layer 2 selected what you need to do is select a color that you like that you would like to use as your source and then you can paint in over another area that new that color so again very very light strokes and constantly resampling as well the last thing you want to do is use the same color over the entire area because it won't look right the skin is naturally different colors if you see someone with a completely uniform face then i just think that looks unnatural you've seen so far and you're getting some good value out of it then consider subscribing because I do have a lot more on the way. So what I want to do now is I'm going to add a gradient and a high pass filter so to do that I'm going to come to our group and I'm going to duplicate. Now we have a duplication of that group then I'm going to disband the group sorry the group has been broken up just like the Beatles and then I'm going to merge the selected layers. So once the layers are merged together, what I want to do is I'm going to rename it HP for high pass. Then I'm going to open up the filters and just scroll a little bit down to high pass. And there is our hideous high pass filter and a radius of 1.5 pixels I find works well for me. Then the iPad will get on with applying that for me. And then what I'm going to do once it's finished, which is right now, is I'm going to come back over to the Layers panel and select Hard Light. And what that's done is it's just sharpened my image ever so slightly. So you may not be able to appreciate this fully on the screen, but this is with it on and this is with it off. So now what I want to do is I'm just going to make an empty pixel layer and I'm going to apply a gradient to it. So come over to the gradient tool, which is already selected conveniently. The, it's called the fill tool and just draw a gradient across. And before I go any further, actually, this is where my iPad likes to lag. It seems to find these gradients very hard to do but that's fine I'm just going to make it the top layer and then with this circle selected on the top right I'm going to come over and choose a nice purple at the moment I am applying this purple and blue filter gradient to all of my pictures so that's like a phase I'm going through so then I'm going to come down here and select the blue I want a nice like electric blue and you can see my iPad lagging there Let's just give it a chance to do its thing. Okay, I, that's not the blue I wanted, but I'm going to go with it just to avoid any more lag. And then uh, 
I'm going to turn the opacity down to 10%. Perfect. Uh, not 11. Thank you very much. 10. And then I'm going to go to Color Dodge and select that. So there uh, you can see with out the pixel layer and with our new gradient. So now what I want to do with the background layer selected, I'm going to come to the crop tool and I always intended to crop this eight by 10, by the way, because that's why the lights are in the picture. And the ratio is five by four. And there we go. So I'm quite happy with that image. So what I want to do is do a little bit more color grading. So I'm going to export it. Then I'm going to come to darkroom, open it up. Here is my image. Oh, and these pictures are from my wedding, by the way. It was my anniversary yesterday, one year, uh, which was fun. And you know what I didn't notice in Affinity Photo was this handrail down here. So <laughs> I'm going to have to crop that out again. That's fine. So I can come and I've got some nice presets, none of which I don't think should be too appropriate. Oh, actually, sunny day looks uh, quite nice which is interesting. I made that for raw files uh, out and about. And I could just leave it like that. It looks really nice. Uh, let me try from was, which one is this? From was, it means beautiful in Romanian. Uh, it's very beautiful. <laughs> so yeah, that's actually uh, really nice. So we could select a, a few of these presets here, actually. These are some that come with Darkroom. Might be a little bit too much, but you can, uh, tone them down so yeah I think L100 I think is what I'm gonna go with I think it looks nice it might be a just a smidge too much the great thing is if I do export this and I'm looking at it on Instagram or wherever and it does seem like too much I can just come back and just do it again if I was to edit the other way apply this first and then soften the skin I'm stuck with this filter applied so that's why I like to do it the other way on the iPad. So I am really happy with that, actually. Cool, I don't need any more sharpening. I'm happy with the sharpen, but I do want to just crop that little bit out at the bottom there. You could do that for me, Darkroom. That would be fantastic. Thank you very much. So there we go. And now I am ready to export that and I'm just going to save a copy. So now I'm going to put down the Apple Pencil. And like I said, if you've enjoyed this video and you've got some good value from it, then definitely consider subscribing as I do have a lot more in the works. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Take care, stay curious, back around.